Hey, everybody. Happy Halloween. Um, I don't know what you're doing. There's Julie in her costume. I have a spider in my hair. Um, if this is your first time watching us, uh, we want to welcome you to Sunday Stamping with Susan and Julie. I'm Susan LaCroix. I live in Wyandotte, Michigan, and this is my daughter, Julie. She lives in Champaign, Illinois, so we're a couple states apart. So um, we've been demonstrators for 19 years, and Julie had the brilliant idea earlier this year that we should do a video. Since we can't stamp together in person, we try to do it online, and we just cherish the times when we can video together. So hopefully another one soon, but we'll see. Um, anyway, uh, Julie, what are your plans for Halloween? Hey, happy Halloween. Uh, we are having friends over tonight. Actually, this morning, so we're pre-recording this. It's currently Saturday, but we're pretending like it's Sunday because that's when this will premiere. <laughs> Sunday is <laughs> stamping. But Sunday morning, early, we have family pictures scheduled. So hopefully Ooh. the weather will um, will be fine. We're not wearing costumes in our picture, <laughs> but um, I'm looking forward to it. Just like it's a quick little mini session. So it's not very long. And then uh, in the evening, we're going to have some friends over for pizza and trick-or-treating. So uh, kind of low-key, like we, we like trick-or-treating and, you know, we always carve pumpkins and stuff like that, but like the house isn't crazy decorated. Like we're not big, big, big into Halloween, but we do, do yeah. enjoy begging for candy. <laughs> yeah. We're the same way as you know, growing up, we really didn't yeah. decorate much for Halloween. We did pumpkins and of course, but trick or tr trick or treating, we actually are going to an orchard tomorrow morning, uh, compliments oh. of the Detroit Tigers. Since we're season ticket holders, we're members of the 1901 Society, and so they sponsor events. We've been down to Toledo for a Mud Hens game. That's our um, farm team, and they fed us. So tomorrow uh, we'll get donuts and cider, and I've never been good. to this orchard. So yeah, and then in the later afternoon, uh, your cousin Nina and her husband and their kids will be coming over for pizza, and we will go. They will go trick or treating. <laughs> I will say we don't pass out candy anymore. Our block has kind of emptied out a little bit. So oh. we really don't get trick-or-treaters anymore. When we first moved here, yeah. we got tons, but we really don't anymore. So we just kind of turn off the lights and shut the shades and uh, usually watch TV or st I'm stamping or something. But yeah, so that's going to be our tomorrow. Usually we go to other friends' house and trick-or-treat there. So we don't, I think this might be our only second time trick-or-treating here in our neighborhood. Oh, okay. um, and so usually we don't pass out candy at our house because we're not here. Um, and we will be this time. And so Jim just said yesterday, he said, we don't have any candy to pass out. And I said, that's because I didn't want to eat it all. <laughs> So that is on my list for today. I need to buy some candy. Hopefully it's not all sold out. Otherwise they're getting Smarties and Dum Dums or whatever the cheap thing is that nobody wants to hand out. <laughs> I bet there'll be plenty. I, I think so. I hope so. You, I mean, even if we have to get like regular bags of candy, there's still no shortage of candy. I was going to say, <laughs> I realized too, I, uh, so, um, with Eloisa and Elliot coming over, I have a couple of those um, tombstone boxes left. Oh, yeah. So I pulled out stuff to decorate them. And then again, we need to go out and get Halloween candy because I used it all on the grandkids and our girls weekend mm -hmm. and hostess club. So Do you know, my kids have still not opened their candy from you. Really? Yeah, I know, right? Like I ate my candy bag. Like, <laughs> right away. no, not one of them is touched. I said, Nana said you can have it whenever you'd like if you want to open it early. And they're like, no, we're going to wait. <laughs> Whose kids <Wow>. are you? <laughs> right? Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, speaking of trick or treating, we have a treat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm really excited about the products that we're sharing today. Should we go ahead and get started? Oh, yes. Please do, Jay. Okay, I'm gonna to switch to my screen. All right, and flip on an extra light. There we go. Oh my gosh, have you guys heard about Eden's Garden? This is a brand new product suite. You might've seen other demonstrators sharing it. I really haven't shared anything about it yet. Um, I don't, I don't know. I've just been busy, I guess, in October, but um, this was available for demonstrators to pre-order in October, and it will be available for everybody starting November 2nd. So in just two days, on Tuesday, November 2nd, 
all the way through January 3rd when the next mini catalog starts. So we've got a couple months um, for these pre-release, early release products. So this is what Eden's Garden um, is. It, it starts with this bundle at the top. And so this bundle has a clean stamp set, clean rubber, and these awesome dies. And this is going to be in the next mini catalog that starts in January. So the January through June mini catalog 2022 will include this rubber stamp set. And I just love the distinctive images in this set. And then these beautiful dies that go with. So this bundle will be available in that mini catalog, but the rest of the products I'm gonna show you are exclusive to this early release um, promotion and will only be available while supplies last in November and December. So, I mean, fingers crossed they won't sell out right away, but there is a chance that they could sell out before the end of the promotion period. So if you really love, especially the designer paper and the cotton paper and the gems, you wanna make sure that you order early, order right away in November, even if you wait to get the bundle later. So here's the designer paper. It's a specialty paper and it is a 12 by 12 paper. I've just cut it down for the ease of showing. Um, so you can see we've got the gold foil accents in all of the patterns. Uh, lots of green in here, soft succulent, evening evergreen, and then the gold and white is the, is the base color. And then on the other side, um, some monochromatic uh, patterns here with the different greens and the, the white background. Really beautiful. This one's got like an ombre uh, effect with the, the different shades of green. And then this is really interesting. This is um, Ever Eden um cotton paper so it includes 10 sheets that are 12 by 12 you get five of each color so five soft succulent and five evening evergreen and essentially these are like tissue paper i wasn't sure what to expect but they are really 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 thin um and mom i'm really excited about the technique you're going to show um with this i just used it on one card i'll show you really quick that card i'm going to bring it in i did like a little just folding back and forth with the the piece and tucked it under there as like a little um almost like a faux ribbon on that card and then the last thing in this sweet collection are the gems. And I'm gonna open this up so you can get the full peak of them. There are these um, petal or leaf shaped gems that are the lighter color. And then two sizes of the darker gems. These are faceted and also have sort of a holographic um, look to them. I'm not sure how well they come across on camera, but they're just, they're just beautiful. Yeah. And so the gems, the paper, and the cotton paper are all while supplies last. Um, if you want to get the whole thing, you can get the Eden Garden collection, which includes the bundle with the 10% discount, the designer paper, the cotton paper, and the garden gems. Oh, I have samples to show you. <laughs> I was about to wrap it up and say, that's it, your turn. But uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I participated in a swap. And so I have a bunch of samples to share with you. I'm super excited about this. So these are all mostly from other demonstrators. This one's from Deb Snyder. And there you go. You can see the scored lines there down the side. And then, uh, oh gosh, that's really pretty. I didn't notice that when he opened it up. And I, was, I was trying to figure out what that is. She did like a little die cut of the sheet. And then can you see sort of like the cotton paper in the background? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just noticed that. It almost looks like a curtain. It's so beautiful. Oh, she always does like fun little peaks like that. Here's one from Kathy Miller. And so she's using the the um gilded gems. I know, like I'm I always want to say it the wrong way. It's gilded gil gems. Gilded. gilded I, gems. I always want to say gilded. I don't know why. Gil gilded gems. Gilded um, gems. <laughs> here's one by Natalie Travis. Um, and you can see that detailed die cut in there, both in the gold and in the soft succulent. Actually, it looks like she did that on the, um, the cotton paper. It's very, very light. Um, uh, these detailed dies are just so amazing. Here's one from Carol Nordquist, and she used the, um, that, that stitchery. Can you see in the background? Let me open that up. The stitching there. Oh. Uh, and I thought that was a really great dye to use as a background with this, um, with this suite, really beautiful. On the inside there, she's got some stamping. 
Um, you know, I saw somebody online um, that the die that you have in the last card, the dear friend. Nope, nope, that one. Yep. And they did it in evening evergreen or a green and then um, punched out some pumpkins and put it all the way around it. Oh, yeah, it was really pretty. That sounds lovely. Well, the, like all these cards use the paper, which is like all green, but I was thinking how beautiful some of these images would be in fall colors, like mm -hmm. uh, bumblebee and Cajun craze and, you know, like a cherry cobbler. It'd be so beautiful. Yeah. Um, this gold shimmer ribbon, it's not part of the suite, but it goes really well. And several people use them on their cards. This one is by Dina Recal and this one by Tracy Jacobs, just like just a little peek like of it. that gold shimmer ribbon and that one was uh not orderable but it, i think it's back in stock here's one by celine kempton and she's incorporated the gold shimmer vellum um as a layer back there that's a really pretty um a really pretty thing to pair with this suite as well this one's by angie leach i think this yeah let me open it up i think this designer paper has like a a fun fold so it's like one piece of designer oh. paper and then um, it it folds like a like a gate fold. Isn't that clever? It is. Next one is by Monica Davis. I just love that gold detail. I've got this new light, and, and it's like you can see the the bar of light. I'm trying to adjust my angle on these cards. That's really pretty. This one is by Kim Peck. Was this advisory board, Julie? Uh, no, this was another swap group, a, a one for one swap group that I'm part of. Donald Shevsky did this one. This one is by Barb Mulliken. Well, so many people use that gold ribbon. I love it. Oh, this one is by Susan Campfield with the time worm type embossing folder in the background. I love adding that texture. That's so pretty. And then um, one more, this one is by Leanne Graff. Very pretty. And then the card that I sent to everybody was this double Z fold card. Nice. Um, I didn't have the gems until just yesterday my package came. So I added some gems to my card. They weren't part of my swap because I didn't have them, but they were a delayed, delayed item from demonstrator pre-order. They weren't available right away, but. I find this shape to be challenging on the gems, but um, I'm sure I'll, I'm sure I'll grow. <laughs> They'll grow on me. <laughs> um, I think you're using that gem shape, mom. Are you ready to show us your project? I am. All I'm right, going to slide see. over. Oh, my light went off. What the heck? Oh, no, there it is. Oh, <sighs> that was scary. All of a sudden it was dark over here. All right. So, um, I, I love this little project I'm going to show you. And I'm, you know, this is my favorite adhesive. I say it every week. <laughs> but for this one, I use a lot of it. So I broke out a brand new one because I don't want to try to do this and have no glue. Okay, so, so quick question. Yeah. On average, I mean, not counting this card because it takes a lot, but like how often would you say you break out a new one of those glues? How long does it last you? Oh boy, that depends on what I'm doing. Sometimes they last quite a while and sometimes I, I zip through them. So, um, and a lot of my customers are starting to use this more as well. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, as a matter of fact, when I brought, got this one out, it was like, I only have one more unopened one on the shelf. So, cool. yep, I'll be placing an order soon and stocking up. So, yeah. Um, anyway, so as Julie said, I'm going to use some of this cotton paper. So I'm using a piece of the this, this soft succulent. One side, just like tissue paper, is shiny, and the other side is a matte side. So I'm stamping on the matte side because I want it to, uh, the ink to soak in. So um, just a, a regular card base, um, and I am using um, some white. So the dimensions will be um, in our description, but the basic white is five inches by three and three quarter, and I'm using two of them. And then I've got a piece of basic black, five and a quarter by four. Again, I'm using two of them. And then I just cut this, the cotton paper, six inches by five inches, because I'm going to do a technique that um, really I haven't done in a while. And it's called faux silk. 
So I just, when I saw this cut paper, I thought, oh, yeah, this is what I want to try. So um, I'm using black stays on so that it, it um, I tried the memento and then I ended up with black ink all over my hands and fingers. So mm. if you're going to do this, then you, you're going to want to uh, use the stays on if you want this color. So um, I just wanted some, some really stark contrast. So what I'm doing is I'm going to make like a background, a collage background, and um, I'm just going to go ahead and stamp all over. And I usually start, I always start with my largest image. And then I'll fill in with smaller images. So you kind of get the idea, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to, I mean, I, you guys can sit here and watch me stamp, but I already have one done just for the sake of time and I'm just really blowing this here stamping. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm going to just stop right now. <laughs> I, was, I don't think you're blowing it except for the end there when you got a little yeah, a little yeah. rock there, but that's why that's why we do ahead just in case. <laughs> just in case. And so um here is a piece that I already stamped. Oh, it's lovely. And <clears throat> excuse me. Um I really um wanted this to sit and dry too. That's the other thing. Mm. So I'm gonna move my stays on ink blocks off my field here <laughs> and take my um, piece of basic white. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a whole bunch of glue to it and then I'm going to um, put this on there. So um, let's see if I can get some out of the bottom. And I always forget about this bottom. If you have to put some glue on a large area like this, you know, there's that little bottom piece that just spreads it so nicely. And I don't care if it's not real smooth and you'll see why, if you've never done this technique before, you'll see why in a minute. It's been a long time since I've done the technique. Do you crumple the paper or not? I do, and I should have done that before I put the glue on. That's all right. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, you're gonna crumple it. And probably the more crumpled, the better. Mm. And then you're gonna undo it. So I would like it crinkled a little bit more. So I'm just gonna kind of really work this. All right, that looks pretty crinkled, huh? Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and put this on my white paper. really going to be a faux silky piece almost too much and and i uh julie and i were talking earlier and she said you know you could just use an adhesive sheet and i said yeah but i kind of like to smush mm -hmm. so the the liquid glue lets me smush or smooth or you know kind of do whatever that's so pretty so then on the back, that's a little bit on the crookedy side, but I don't care about that. I'm gonna just take some um, seal. And try to, um, and I may have to take my scissors and do a little trimming too. Yeah, I'm, I'm finding this interesting because my instinct would be just to cut the edge is off, but I really love that you're wrapping it because now you have sort of that finished edge. Yep, that's exactly why I do this. Oh, I need a little bit more here. I sure didn't get that very even on here. Okay, so there you go. So we won't look at the bad side. <laughs> <laughs> we'll look at the good side and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna see if I can, where's my snips? Maybe I will do this. Hmm. All right, I'm not going to be able to do it. And I'm not using those scissors, Julie. <laughs> not oh. gonna do it. <laughs> okay. All right, so now I'm going to put that piece on my basic black. So it's kind of a matte. And I'm actually going to put my seal on the black. Ooh, 
Ooh, this looks off. Why does this look so off? Holy cow, that is really off. Huh, I don't know why. I'll show you the finished card, <laughs> which isn't off. <laughs> oh, that's so pretty. Oh, but just know that this is off. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put this on my card base. Actually, I shouldn't put it on my card base. I'll instead just show you, because I'm going to do some trimming on this. So I, I pre-did my greeting. Dear friends, how are you? And I'm taking a little piece of our ribbon, our glitter, black glitter ribbon. Mm, I love that ribbon. Yeah, I do too. Now that one's in the annual catalog. There's the white one and that's in the mini, but the black one's in the annual catalog. Yes. Yep. And it was in last year's fall mini mm -hmm. catalog because of... Um, Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. yeah, but it's it, it's yeah, good for so much more than Halloween. Like, oh, it absolutely is. I mean, it's even pretty on some Christmas cards. Oh, so my gosh. I was going to say, I use it all the time for Christmas. Yeah. So I'm going to put this back on here. And I think I really feel bummed that that gets, that's not so, that's not straight. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. I'm not either, but I'm gonna I'm gonna fix it for sure. And then I'm gonna just snip with my ribbon scissors. <laughs> oh my goodness. I know, right? Oh dear. This is just <laughs> giving me all kinds of grief. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord have mercy. All right. You're going to get the idea anyway. I am going to fix this card when we're done because <laughs> I'm using a couple dimensionals for the greeting as well because I just can't sit here and look at this card so messed up. And I'm going to probably redo everything because I don't like the ribbon either. Okay. So what I did though is I took some of these gems and I'm calling these like a marquee. Oh, thing. yeah, that's a good word. And so I'm just taking a couple of the light ones and just putting them on the ends. And I'm doing them a north-south orientation versus a east-west. I think they can go either way. I love it. They could. They could. So anyway, that is um, how I'm using these gems. And I did the inside as well. Use that. So on on the good card. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just took a piece, same measurements for the basic white and the basic black, and uh -huh. just stamped some of the leaves there. And then I'll just put this on the inside. Oh Lord, have mercy! Did you see that, Julie? It all got gummed up. Yeah. It looks like maybe it wasn't flat, and it was kind of like yeah at an angle so sometimes for me i don't know if other people have this problem it slips off the edge mm -hmm. and if i catch it early enough i can take a, a pick and just pick it up and shove it right back on the roller and voila perfect okay i just thought the black makes this pop on this soft succulent so it kind of kind of coordinates. I love it. It's beautiful. So that is my project. I do have some others that I can show you. Um, yeah. um, shortly after I got mine, we had our team meeting. And so um, I'd like to give my team some samples to make of new product coming out. So mm -hmm. all of our three projects for um our team meeting was using this eden's garden and this oh, is the faux, faux sidestep and again i didn't i i changed these gems um when i got them because i didn't have them either when we had our meeting mm -hmm. so that was the one julie did you show this on a sunday video um i don't think it was sunday i think it was a thursday a it was thursday, a thursday night. Night. Mm -hmm. with the yeah. tree you were you were here it was right before girls weekends yeah, I got it. Do you want me to show it? If you want. All right, well, I'll finish these first. And then we did this one. 
So the distinctive big flower. Love that. And the hello there and some of this gorgeous paper, which I just love. And actually the Gilded Gems really re work really well, mm -hmm. well with this. And then on the inside, I just stamped a couple in the corner. It's a nice way to tie in the gold and the paper is to use those gold gems. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So this one, I used the border edge punch. Julie, I this is I did this on our girls weekend mm -hmm. next to me. So I did two strips with the border edge and I used some of the soft succulent um, open weave ribbon. Open weave ribbon, yep. Mm -hmm. And then what I did here is I stamped some of the images, the leaves on the designer series. Oh, yeah, I love that. And then die cut out the the tag. Uh, my heart is tied to yours. Tug if you need anything. I Aww. love that. And I um, I just because we didn't have the gems, um, I put just put some rhinestones on there. Lovely. So those were those were the projects we did for our team meeting. What great projects! Thank you. And then our faux silk. Oh, I love this technique. I'm definitely going to have to try it with this cotton paper. It's so perfect. And your card is just so beautiful. Thank you so much. And I'll fix the nasty one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm done. Are you ready, Jay? I think so. Let me replace here to my screen. Okay. I have a great card I'm going to share with you today. Um, I actually shared this card recently, the book binding card, uh, but I love it so much. We're doing that card base again, but the thing I'm really excited about is the, the focal point of the card. I think in the last time I did it, I did like a quilt, um, but this time I'm going to make a wreath with this Eden's garden. What is this? Yeah, Eden's card uh, stamps up. Okay, so for the base of the card, the book binding, it's a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of cardstock, and I've scored at five or four and a quarter, five and a half, and six and three quarters. And um, these measurements too will be in the video description. So the tall card in half is five and a half, and then four and a quarter is where it folds back. And so this is sort of that, that book binding, right? That The look of that. Um, and I shared this last time and I'll just say it again, in case you didn't see that last video, you can adhere this whole thing closed, or if you adhere just the sides, then you can create a pocket for a gift card. So this is a fun, a fun, a fun card fold to do if you are sending a little gift. So I don't have a gift card, um, next to me, but you can see it would just fit in there. Like that. So just a, a different way to do your, your book binding and add like a little extra something inside. So for the, the side over here, I have a piece of the designer paper that's one in a, one inch by four inch. Inch is, I can talk. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's going to go here on the side. I love just highlighting the, the little side with like a little side panel. And then um, for the main part of the card, which is four and a quarter, four and a quarter. So it's a square. I've got two white pieces, one's for the inside, one's for the outside. They're three and a half inches by three and a half inches. And then uh, for the front, a piece that's going to layer on top of the white, that's three and a quarter by three and a quarter of soft succulent. And this is the piece that we're going to stamp on. So Let's do that next. Um, so the pieces in this stamp set, um, I love this big one, but I kind of was intrigued by these smaller pieces and I felt like they really could go together to make a wreath. And so I played around and we're using two of them. I, I picked the two that have the pointy leaves. So I'm using this image and then also this smaller one. So here's an easy way to make a wreath. This is three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And I'm gonna stamp in soft succulent and then also the evening evergreen. So the first is the larger stamp and you can see it already has kind of a curve. So like it's, I think, made for creating a wreath. So we are going to make this quick and easy because that is my style. Now you could use the stamp apparatus and do all kinds of like turning and stamping, but this is like the easy version. You don't need the stamp apparatus. So we're stamping in the center along each side. So I stamped once at the top, then I'm gonna turn it and stamp in the center on the next side. And they don't need to connect. You're just stamping in the center right at the edge all the way around. So there's the third one. 
And then the fourth one. And now we're going to go Lovely. back. <laughs> we're going to go back with the smaller one. And now we're going to stamp in the corners. And it's going to just fill it in like magic. Like you're <laughs> this, it's so easy. Like it feels like it should be harder than this, but it's really not. Okay. So with the smaller piece, now I am focusing on stamping in like in the corners and don't focus on trying to like complete the circle, just stamp, you know, on the sides and just stamp in the corners and it's all just going to come together like magic. Look at that. What? That's gorgeous. <laughs> oh my gosh. So easy, right? Yeah. Okay, so this card, so clean and simple. So we're just going to layer here on the whisper white and then that's going to go the reason i love this book binding card is because i i really loved the square element here of the wreath and i struggled because sometimes square cards are hard to send you know with the envelopes not fitting right and so i love that the book binding card allows for like a square then with like the extra pattern on the side so that's why i chose to do the the book binding again um because it's so perfect for square designs like this one Okay, for the inside, I'm going to stamp the sentiment, sending hugs. And then just, we'll do a leaf. Um, and oh, we need that open because for the front, we're going to do the sentiment. Which one did I pick? My heart is tied to yours. Is that the same one you used or maybe it was just a sample? Oh, I think I just read it because I think it's such cute. It was on one of my samples, yes. Mm -hmm. I stamped a little crooked, so I, I tried it again. Okay, so for this now, before I put it on the front of the card, I'm going to use the, um, what is this sponge called? <laughs> um, oh, I don't have my catalog near me, sorry. It's oh. uh, pick a punch, right? A pick a punch. Um, Maybe. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's in the annual catalog. Let's just take a look really quick. Uh, there are several pick a punches. <laughs> so um, the one I'm using is the one on the right. This one right here, lovely labels, pick a punch. But there are three punches that have the similar sort of style. They have different tracks. So you can do a one inch piece, a three quarter inch piece, or a half inch piece. And so I actually made mine <laughs> three fifths. <laughs> three, no, three five eighths, <laughs> mine's five eighths inch. So it's like right in between the half. So I'm just going to like, it doesn't fit exactly in the track. So I'll just center it as best as I can. And it's gonna go all the way in to punch. So I'm pushing it all the way in and then centering it and punching and you get that awesome. Very nice. There you go. And then wow. the other side again, put it all the way in first and then center it in the track. I wanted, so like, I felt like a half inch was too small, you know, because there are two lines of text here, but the three quarters would have been too much. I didn't want to cover up so much of the wreath. So um, mm -hmm. this is going to go in the front there. Let's glue this down first. This card is so quick and easy. You could make this up really fast to send to a friend who needs an encouraging word a little note of love and support nice and this one's going to go on with dimensionals you could even put some red berries on there and make it a christmas wreath yeah that's what i was saying about like the designer paper is green 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 but like i feel like you could do a wreath like this also in fall colors you know oh, and, yeah. and, oh my gosh it'd be pretty yes and absolutely like I think you could do those leaves like in gold. That would be really pretty too. Ooh, like, yeah. Um, so one more thing I wanna add is I'm just gonna take some of those um, gems and add those on there. Um, and I'm just gonna use the round ones on the, on the edge that are 
that are dar darker. So there's the finished card. Really oh, pretty. Quick and easy wreath. My heart is tied to yours. Tug if you need anything. And then if you want to, you could tuck in a gift card, you know, like maybe Starbucks, the colors are right for that. <laughs> but if you choose not to put in a gift card, like no one's going to know that they're supposed to be there. Sometimes I have cards that like it, it, the pocket looks like they're supposed to be a gift card. Well, if I don't want to send a gift card, then I feel like I can't send that card, you know? So I love that this one has the option, you know, but if you, if you decide not to include a gift card and just want to send a note, then it, that works out fine too. Very pretty. Oh, thank you. All right, let's switch those cameras back and we can show off our cards. Cheese. All right, hold up our cards and say cheese. Cheese. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I have to say when I first saw the Eden's Garden collection, like I wasn't feeling very inspired. Like there's a lot of green, a lot of leaves. Like I just wasn't so sure about it. And honestly, like most of the pre-order period, I didn't play with it and I didn't do anything. But as I saw you making those cards and getting ready for your meeting, and as I started making cards, like I'm really coming around. This suite is just so beautiful. And I'm so excited that we have these exclusive products, the paper and the gems and the cotton paper to play with ahead of time. And then it occurred to me today when I was getting my project ready that this stamp set is supposed to be in the spring catalog. And so I can't wait to see like how these images are going to look in spring colors you know i was thinking spring. that too the pinks <laughs> and the oh yeah the corals and yeah yeah i um i'm excited i'm you know it'll be interesting and i hope there's a coordinating designer series paper that'll be available i don't know that there will i haven't seen the catalog so yeah no so we haven't seen the catalog yet demonstrators will get their first peek at on stage in two weeks um, that will be our first peak and it'll be the, the PDF will be posted shortly after that. I think the 15th of November is the date for the catalog if you're a demonstrator and the demonstrator pre-order starts in December for the catalog that starts in January. So if you're just a happy customer, then you'll be able to order from the mini catalog starting in January. Um, but you'll start to see demonstrators who are getting producted on stage and during pre-order, you're gonna start to see things um, you know, coming up sooner. So if you wanna be one of those people who get to order early, <laughs> you should definitely think about joining our team, the Susan Sparklers and Jubilant Stampers. We just have so much fun. And we have uh, team members who are all across the country. So whether you're in Alaska or Hawaii or Florida, <laughs> like we can Arizona, <laughs> exactly Arizona from from every every which way. Um, we really have such an awesome, amazing group, and I love that we can connect online. I mean, heck, we don't even live near each other, <laughs> and we, you know, we have a a great connection and a great community for our teams. Yeah, online. yeah. yeah. Uh, it is going to be pretty exciting. I think our next visit um, to Champagne is for Christmas, so I'm hoping we can get some, Christ no, not Christmas stamping, but we'll be able to to showcase some of the new product yes. coming up. And as a demonstrator, those demonstrators who attend on stage, which is our annual big like seminar convention, we get to order what's called a product purchase premiere. So we get to order. <laughs> We get to like pre pre order. Uh huh. So, <laughs> so that's exciting. I can't wait to see the catalog. If, if Eden's either. Garden I'm is ready. just like the tip of the iceberg, like I can't wait to see what else is coming. But even though demonstrators will be able to PPP pre pre order, <laughs> <laughs> um, Eden's Garden will be available for yeah. everyone. Everyone who's watching right now in any of the Stampin' Up! markets will be able to order Eden's Garden, the collection, the paper, the stamp set, the dies, everything, or whatever they want individually starting on Tuesday. So yeah. that is just two days from now. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. I have Hostess Club this week. I can't wait to share. Yes. With, with are you making one of these projects with your host club? We are. Should I show you which one? Yeah. Unless you don't want them to know. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> It'll give them a tease. We're doing the faux side stuff. Oh, yes. I love that card. So it's already prepped and in the bin and ready so for people perfect. to make them. 
So Yay! Yeah. Awesome. I, I think that card's going to make them fall in love with Eden's garden. I hope so. I I just um I love I love that faux side step and it's so easy. Yep. So I've typed up and printed off the measurements for them so they can replicate it. So um then I we'll, can we'll put the measurements in the video description too. So if you want to make it at home, yeah. well uh yeah, we'll include know. those <laughs> for you there. We absolutely will. Oh, shall we wrap oh. it up? I think so. We've got Halloween to get ready for. <laughs> yes, we do. And we still have to figure out exactly what we're wearing for our family pictures tomorrow morning. <laughs> Nothing yeah. like waiting until the last minute. Oh gosh, I hope we don't have to go out and buy anything. <laughs> um, we started going through clothes last week and I think that we have some clothes that kind of coordinate. So we just have to kind of pull it out and, and make some final mm. touches with six of us. Like I always like to try to you know, coordinate them. Like we're not matchy matchy where we're all wearing like the same shirt, but you know, we yeah. try to like have the same sort of colors, you know, going right. throughout and sort of look like we're a collection of people <laughs> that belong to yeah. each other. Speaking of family pictures, we are so overdue oh for a gosh. whole family picture. Yeah. I, I, the kids are so little in the one by the front door. So every time someone says, Oh, your family. And so we're trying to explain, well, this guy here, he's now like <laughs> as tall as his dad and she's taller than her mother. And they're like, Oh, wow. You need a new picture. Yes. Nobody's <laughs> little anymore. They're, they're all getting they're so big. big. Yeah. And before they all head off on their own separate ways too, we need to get a picture. Yep. Oh, priority. Yep. Yep. All right, Jay. Well, listen, <laughs> um, I'm going to let you go and thank everybody for tuning in and watching Thanks. us. We're excited and we will see you next week when we have, I don't know. I think it's pretty, pretty neat what we're going to share. So I'm excited. I'm I really am. excited. I am too. <laughs> Are we teasing too much? I Maybe. guess you'll just have to tune in next week and see what we've got for you. I think so. In the meantime, <laughs> Happy stamping, everybody. Love you. <laughs> Love you too, Mom. See you next time. Bye. Bye.